Good morning, Dr. Corey here. Welcome to your motivational mastery session. Hey, in these chats, we discuss areas of psychology and mindset and motivation. Okay, we dig into how we think and what makes us tick and the sometimes real tricky elements of why we do what we do. Now, last week we discussed self-sabotage and it extended into a conversation about self-compassion. I recently also did a live video talk on (laughs) self-talk, okay? And I gave you four methods, four ways of speaking to yourselves that have the potential to move you forward into happiness rather than backwards into stuckness, okay? Well, this week I want to share with you guys how I recognize when I'm digging a hole, all right, and spinning my wheels, and then the moves that I make to course correct. You know, one of my favorite authors discusses how when we're acting from a place of personal integrity and personal empowerment and responsibility through difficult circumstances, we allow our hearts to break open, okay? And this is an image that I will often replay in my mind when I experience something that is painful or difficult or maybe even a little bit scary and I don't, I feel like I'm on shaky ground, I feel uncertain, all right? But so many of you guys have expressed a desire to learn how, to learn how to be and have it be a regular practice to be more self-compassionate because you do recognize that it is that approach that is going to net you the most happiness and the most motivation, okay? And I shared with you guys some of my thoughts and the words that I use personally for myself in the midst um, of and in the spirit of that compassionate understanding. You know, one of the statements that I will often say to myself is, okay, this is difficult. I don't like it. (laughs) I'd rather not be facing this right now, but I am, okay? I will be okay through it. And that's an important piece of it. I will be okay through it, not if I can avoid it. That means, you know, what needs doing? And that's, that's the next piece of it for me is I will ask myself, what needs doing? And how might I move into this space, showing up for myself, not backing away, all right? You know, Rumi, you've heard me mention this uh, Sufi poet quite often, it's my favorite. Uh, He said, wherever you stand, be the soul of that place. And again, that's very vivid, vivid imagery for me, okay? It conveys vision and it it conveys courage to me. Courage doesn't mean the absence of fear, it means moving forward despite the fear, all right? But this is the same thing to me. Allow your heart to break open. So there's this piece of this that means that we need to practice standing in whatever is present in the moment. When you're right here, rather than being in all of the what ifs in the future or the has beens of the past, okay? The important thing to remember, I think, is that we expend less energy right here as opposed to out there or back there. Now, self-compassion, guys, is not, it's not denying that something hurts or that something is painful. What it is, is it's acknowledgement. It's acknowledging the part that hurts and then offering ourselves a new kind of energy. And that might be a courageous energy. It might be a curious energy and it might be a confident energy. You guys get to choose what energy you're gonna bring to that present moment situation. And here's what happens. What we're calling upon is the compassionate advocate inside of us, okay? You know, the person who would wrap our arms around a friend or sit beside us, um, you know, as we let them feel what they need to feel or process whatever it is that's occurring. We don't try to stop our friends from feeling, at least I hope you don't. (laughs) 
because trust is built between people when we can be ourselves, right? And we can express whatever is there. And of course, learning to do so with respect, but we give them the benefit of the doubt that even if they say something that sounds ludicrous or nonsensical, and oftentimes that's how we talk when we're in the midst of difficulty or pain or we feel like we're threatened in some way, but we're not in the best space there, but we don't shut our friends down when they're in that space. That's how we have to be with ourselves as well. We're not expected to be logical necessarily, but trust is built internally in the same way, okay? When we show a deep respect and care for the circumstances in which we find ourselves and we give our hearts permission to break sometimes and overflow, there's the difference. Not cave in, not contract, not harden, but open, all right? So when we're acting in that respectful place towards ourselves. We don't tell ourselves or our friends to shut down, to shut out, and to shut up, okay? But here's the big question. How do we become aware that compassion is indeed necessary in the moment, okay? And in my work with so many clients who struggle, and I'll use the example of binge eating or emotional eating, they're often very disconnected from their bodies, okay? A lot of them train, they exercise, but I mean in a real energetic, emotional way. They are disconnected. And so they live in a real heady, intellectual world, a world governed by their thoughts and thinking and questioning, and that often turns into ruminating, that repetitive thinking over and over and over again, which, you know, they'll describe as if it feels chaotic and, and they feel crazy a lot of times. You know, that's okay. The real thing to, it's okay if you're intellectual. Um, there are benefits to that. And you guys have heard me say this, everything operates on a continuum. I don't want you to get the wrong idea here. But if the motivation beneath it is one that feels liberating and expansive and freeing, okay, then we know we're on a constructive path. When that type of energy is not present and we, we find ourselves in that place of stuckness, okay, in that place of rumination, um, and, you know, this is, this is vivid for me. It's like we're spinning our wheel, wheels. Literally, our thoughts are spinning. It's like we're on a hamster wheel. We miss the rich information that's below the head, <laughs> okay? inside our bodies because that's where our emotions live guys so when that internal critic presents itself blasting us for being stupid or not pretty enough or fat or not strong enough or not masculine enough or weak or shameful or lacking self-control whatever it is that your critic says to you you are going to feel literally feel in your body the consequences of those words, okay? You're gonna tighten up. You're going to feel rigid. You might feel cold. You might feel numb. You might feel your throat constrict. You might start breathing really shallowly, okay? Notice throughout the day when, you're, when you would say, I'm stressed, notice how shallowly you're breathing. <laughs> it's kind of like that, okay? You know, your thoughts might race. You might feel really chaotic and buzzy inside and like your heart is beating out of your chest. You might have a difficult time speaking or formulating sentences, <laughs> okay? You might pace or you might wiggle, you might squirm, you might put your head down. There are so many different ways that your body indicates to you your frame or state of mind they are intimately connected. So now compare those sorts of feelings to when you when you are feeling happy or joyful or free or liberated. How does your body show you? You know, what what are the sensations inside of you? Does it feel like you're lighter, like you've opened up? Um, do you feel 
strong? Do you feel energetic? Do you feel agile? Do you feel clear, pure almost? Here's the thing to remember. When the critic is present, contraction is likely present, okay? The closing down. When the compassion is present, we feel an expansion and an opening up. And it's important to know, guys, that when we contract and close ourselves off, right? Talk to the hand. You know, we're really incapable of being creative. We are incapable of being at all curious. Okay, curious is really an openness to other ideas and perceptions. But you guys, if we notice that we're closing down, and I'll speak for myself personally here, I feel like I need to take immediate action, okay? I need to breathe big, deep, expansive, diaphragmatic breaths. That's where you can put your hands on your belly and just really feel your stomach poking out, moving away from uh, your spine when you breathe, when you inhale. We might need to take a break to do so too. You know, we might have to excuse ourselves if we're we're in situations where the environment is full of distractions, okay? So we can focus on really tuning in to the insides of ourselves. And guys, when we breathe, you know, we can pay attention to extending that exhale so that we can allow the parasympathetic nervous system, that's the part of the nervous system that promotes safety and calm, right? To come back, to be reactivated, to, to help us. So once we're in that space where, you know, we, we are, we're calmer, we're more open, spacious, maybe a little bit curious, then we can practice recognizing what those critical voices are inside of us. And here's the thing, they're not often our own voices. They belong to someone else. And they often aren't telling the truth, okay? Yet, we believe them. Perhaps in those moments, what we can do is we can pretend that there's a person literally standing across from us saying those things, you know, to like externalize it. That can be helpful. But then, you know, in the here and now, not in the past, when this might have occurred, out here, not in here. It means we can create some level of distance between us and those voices, those thoughts. But so then what do we do? Well, you know, if there were actually a person, and I'm talking like I'm an adult here, and there's a person across from me blasting me and calling me names and telling me I'm not good enough, what am I going to do in that situation? I'm just going to stand there and take it? Maybe in, at other times in my life I would have because I didn't have the skill or the confidence to speak up. But in my life now, I'm going to be assertive, okay? Not defensive because that's just, it's like pouring, pouring gas on a fire. But I am going to stand up for my rights. I'm going to stand up for my integrity. And I'm going to say something like, you know, um, this kind of disrespectful, and harshness it's pretty uncalled for <laughs> i'm i'm not gonna stand here and and i don't have to listen to this so you know you may have some you may have some valuable things that you want to share with me and coach me on uh, but those lessons need to come in a more compassionate loving way so i encourage you guys to try that speak to those voices that are not helpful for you, that don't build your confidence, okay? There's an important piece in this, I think, that you know we often miss, and it's that if we want to expand more often rather than contract, we have to deliberately practice expanding, okay? We have to look for and extend those opportunities to do so. We, all the time, as often as humanly possible, because as you've heard me say, everything we do, think, feel, has the potential to become a habit. What do you want to become a habit? Now, if all we're doing is practicing noticing the critic and the negative thoughts, we're just gonna get really good at noticing the negative thoughts, okay? 
You all have heard of sports-specific training. If you want to be a champion power lifter, you're not going to do so by practicing the pedal stroke on a bicycle, right? <laughs> okay, leave that to me. <laughs> we have to practice what we want in our lives. So the compassionate advocate, guys, that's the internal coach that's going to guide us towards our strengths and our capacities and our resources. And we have a lot of them. We have a lot of resources internally and externally. Sometimes we have to sit down and really reflect on what they are and maybe who they are and where they are, but we have them. Opening to the good, okay? And which is what, that's what we want our minds to attach to most often is the good, is facilitating and noting the good regularly. There's a reason we keep hearing about gratitude exercises, guys, because it's the most research-based method of practicing being more open and expansive and generating a level of happiness, okay? You know, my boyfriend and I have this practice where each night we express three appreciations to each other. We do it faithfully, and it's really changed the dynamic of our relationship. We laugh more, we feel safer with one another, we trust each other more, we're kinder toward each other, we think about how the other person is going to be affected by each decision that we might make individually, okay? And we get to know what the other likes and appreciate and needs, okay? So today, guys, here's my one ask for you. I want you to shift your attention to have it land within the sensations of your bodies, okay? Notice the contraction and expansion and how that feels, what the differences are, okay? There's emotion there. That's so important to remember. And it doesn't have to scare you. It's energy. Thanks, guys. Have an awesome week.